Alrighty, Lionel with you. And I've taken this opportunity to provide this um, discussion about something that is so important to me, so critical, I wanted to share it with you. Now first, if you've noticed, I put on my website there, free podcast. I um, charge a nominal fee uh, per month, the uh, price of a, the latte, basically, for my daily uh, podcast on a subscription basis. But today is today's a freebie. It's that important. I want to get this out, and I want you to spread this to as many people as possible. I want everybody to see it. I want everybody to hear my words, and I want to see if you and I can apply some critical thinking involving something which is so important to me. I also want us to try to do this. I want you to take whatever your political ideology was or is, whatever your mindset was, whatever your your a priori, priori world view, whatever you thought you were, conservative, liberal, or progressive, or Zoroastrian, or libertarian, or communist, or what, whatever you are. I, I hope you are a free thinker and a critical thinker. But I want you to, to take all of this away and let's apply bare bones, un, um, un, uh, non-specific, unprejudiced political analysis to the issue of 9-11 first responders and the link to cancer. Okay, That's our goal. Let's look at this as though we have never thought of any other political issue before. You're not an Obama fan or a detractor, Democrat, Republican. You got the point? Let us strip away whatever it is that we thought we were and apply critical thinking and analyze this situation uh, completely unfettered and unbiased and uncontaminated by any pre-thinking, okay? Now, the rule is that uh, the New York Times reports that there is not enough evidence. Here is the issue before. Is there is not enough evidence yet uh, to say whether the dust and smoke clouds produced by the uh, attacks on 9-11 at Ground Zero, uh, there's not enough evidence to show that they cause cancer. This is according to federal officials, and this is uh, getting a lot of people very upset, specifically Dr. John Howard, who is the director of the National Institute for Occupation, Occupational Safety and Health. Okay, you got it? So basically what they're saying is there is not enough evidence to show, well, this, this is what we are presented with before you react accordingly, there is not enough evidence to show that those individuals who were exposed at ground zero, either as first responders or firemen or volunteers or what have you, those who have, let's say, contracted cancer and who were there over X period of time, there is not enough evidence to show causality, a causal connection. To use legal terminology, there's not enough to show a proximate cause. That this equals this, not correlation, cause. Okay? You understand the distinction? Correlation is one thing. Cause is another. Now, what I want to do for the sake of uh, this uh, argument, I want to you to assume, argue, I know that's fancy, legal talk for, for the sake of argument, as I sip my coffee. I want you to think that this is absolutely true. Let us go on the assumption. Let us go on the assumption that you cannot possibly prove any kind of a cause even a correlation. I don't care. For my argument, that means nothing to me. You got it? Because let me just stop for a second. Correlation and cause are two things which we really need to spend more time on as a country. People love to make connections, causality connections, gateway drug theories, marijuana is a gateway drug to harder stuff, pornography, and sexual abuse are caused or correlated together. We love to make connections. People say this all the time, that crime started to go up in our country and juvenile delinquency went through the roof as soon as we took prayer out of schools. You take an event and then you notice something that happens and through some type of uh, temporal propinquity or some kind of a connection, you say, aha, this equals that. So, we're not even going to go there. Let's just assume there's no connection whatsoever. Now, before we begin, you and I know that we're not epidemiologists. We really don't know a lot about all there is to know about medicine and cancer. 
I mean, you can't look at a particular sample and say, aha, that's, that's a, uh, a, a, a cause of such and such. In fact, believe it or not, did you know that if you look at the effects of, of cancer after Hiroshima, you're not going to believe this, but uh, Three Mile Island and Chernobyl, that the number of people, listen to me, the number of people, and I checked this out with uh, Dr. Michael Bodden, the forensic pathologist of renown. He's a friend of mine, happens to be, and he was you know, a star of HBO's Autopsy and knows this stuff. There, w- there was such a de minimis or such a, a, uh, a, a minuscule amount of, quote, cancers caused in those samples, post-Hiroshima, post-Chernobyl, post uh, maybe Fukushima, I'm not sure, that you could not attribute any cancers based upon the exposure at the time. Now this freaked me out, because sometimes what we do is we anecdotally kind of connect things logically, or what we think is logical. We don't really know, we just kind of think, and we forget at what level of proof are we talking When I was a psych major, we did a lot of stuff uh, involving statistical analysis. And you have to be able to know how things work statistically. And what you do is you've got to know how do you look at a sample, for example. Uh, A sample group and a control group. Uh, One group gets a drug, uh, the other one doesn't get the drug. And you've got to ask yourself, is there a significant difference? And there are all different ways to see whether these changes, this difference, is significant. That being said, my point is sometimes anecdotally we think that there's a connection and there's not. I'm not going to go into nuclear poisoning, but believe it or not, unless it pierces your body and hits an organ like a thyroid or something, oftentimes radiation just goes right through you. Believe it or not, that's for another argument. Now, But in this particular case, it is tough for people to make an epidemiological case. And they may be scientific. Do you know, ready for this, do you know, and I know this on uh, on good uh, good source here, that when the uh, Surgeon General made the um, uh, statement that cigarette smoking was linked to uh, cancer, lung cancer and the like, that they went through, oh my God, samples, 35, 40,000 samples of tissue and... I mean, before they figured this thing out, and you just can't, you just can't look at a group and say, "Wow, that's a," they sure have a lot of such and such because you have to. I think I've, I've gone too far on this topic, but I think you understand there are environmental factors in firefighters and first responders. You could say, "Guess what? Their population on its own has a higher than normal instances or incidence of, of cancer because of what they do. They are higher in stroke, higher in heart attack, higher in what have you." If you have a sample, let's say there was a hundred people at Ground Zero, and four of them have contracted a glioblastoma or some type of, uh, 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 you know, acoustic neuroma or some some um, uh, metastatic uh, uh, stage 4 brain cancer, is that significant compared to the population or compared to the population of firefighters and normal first responders? I don't know, but I say yet again, for the sake of this argument, for the sake of what we're doing now, for the sake of today's discussion, we're going to assume, okay, arguendo for the sake of argument, that there is absolutely no statistically valid difference or no causation established between first responders and any type of health uh, 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 problems or or cancers that were uh, contracted or developed at some point thereafter, okay? Do you have that? Do you understand where we are? Good. Now, the basis, first of all, in my argument today, and what the thesis of my argument today is called, oh yeah, so what? Not exactly the most brilliant way to phrase it, but that's precisely what I think. Here's what I suggest. I believe that the government should say, you know what, maybe there's not, maybe maybe there's not some, a a connection, causal or otherwise, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to pay the United States government, for any kind of medical care or treatment uh, for these people that we have identified as either first responders 
or whatever, who were there at Ground Zero for a minimum of one day or two hours or whatever that standard is, I say the government should pay for it without any questions asked, and I'll tell you why. Now first, the jurisdiction of all of this is specifically the James Adroga 9-11 Health and Compensation Act, which took effect on January the 2nd of this year. It provides for $4.3 billion, would be billion dollars over the next five years to monitor, treat, and compensate people who were exposed to, you know, the fumes, the debris, the dust at ground zero. The New York Times reports that, quote, the act provides treatment and compensation for a specific list of illnesses, mainly asthma and other respiratory diseases. I don't mean to laugh. I'm thinking about how, how penny-pinching they are, and I'll tell you why. As part of a political compromise needed to pass the bill, cancer was not included. A provision of the law, however, specified that the administrator of the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health would periodically review the evidence to determine whether cancer, which can be one of the most expensive illnesses to treat and compensate for, should be added to the list. You got it so far? You got it? I mean, this is, this is, this this is where, and I'm not laughing at, believe me, this is tragic. I'm laughing at the absurdity of this. So basically what they're saying is, okay, we'll give you $4.3 billion over five, over five years. Wow. Thanks. But not cancer. Oh, maybe cancer. Okay, now, here's where I decide that we are, well, frankly, I don't care. And this may be a bad example, but let me give you the basic thesis for what I'm saying. We, oh, what's the word? Oh, yes, piss away money on stuff that nobody even bats an eye on or over. We absolutely look the other way. We don't care about cases where we have absolutely positively spent money in amounts that you cannot even fathom. So understand my thesis is this. I want you to apply the same kind of nonchalance. I want us, the government, and everybody else to look the other way. Like we do so many times, which I will enumerate. And that will blow your mind. My, This is not maybe perhaps, to, to me it's quite logical, but you might say, well, that's not it a good enough reason to look the other way. Why? Tell me why. If we look the other way after trillions of dollars, trillions, sorry for this noise, after trillions of dollars, in fact, it gets even more crazy, but if we look the other way there, why should we not include within that lax purview this particular case regarding these people. Now, do you think that maybe these 9-11 people are fudging on this? Do you think, what, they're pretending to have cancer? Do you think maybe they're exaggerating their claims just to get that nifty chemo and, you know, uh, hospital stay at Sloan Kettering? You know how those people are. They might be trying to pull our, you know, the wool over our eyes, trying to get free cancer treatment. You know how these people are, these cons. We've got to keep an eye on this. Because, by the way, anybody who claims to have cancer, we got to make sure they're just not saying it for any other reason. Now, isn't that absurd? First of all, when somebody comes to you and says, Hey, listen, can I, um, do you have any money that you can give me? Why? Well, you know, I'm a, um, a veteran of a particular event, you know, when I was... And uh, I'm not really able to, to prove much, but I, but it was pretty tough. And I like a couple of hundred thousand. And you can see where people would at least, you know, at least let, let's kind of look at this over and perhaps make sure nobody's trying to, to, uh, to you know, take advantage of our generosity and beneficence. But in this case, we've got some of the sickest people, in some cases that are suffering just indescribable cancers and, and, and re respiratory disorders, and are under the medic medicines. If 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 whatever they suffered at Ground Zero, if that did not kill them directly, these medicines will. How their livers are processing this is beyond me. Seriously, how they do this is beyond me. Before we go on, 
I just have to say this again. Have you seen these people? Have you seen what we're talking about here? Some of the most catastrophic medical uh, uh, traumas, or, or as my friend Michael Bond says, traumas, you have ever seen. Mind-boggling horrors. Right off the bat. For people who are dying. I, 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 and we'll get, we'll, we'll get in, in a moment to what I was talking about, but first, is there any heart that people have? And I know this is not really much of a, of, of a legal argument, but I mean, is there any compassion? Is there any part in these, in these bastards' minds, these politicians who say, oh, come on, because, oh, we play a good game, don't we? Oh, God, we love to, to wave our flag. And we have our lapel pins and support the troops and united we stand and nine eleven. I mean we we I mean we normally milk nine eleven to death. You remember I'm not sure if you were here at the time, but right after nine eleven, everywhere I went, everywhere I went, it seems, there was some there was some new crass way to commercialize the horrors of nine eleven. They had I'll never forget this one. It was for a car commercial, a car, a car service, excuse me. And it started off with this kind of a militaristic, yet funereal kind of a dirge, like, you know, uh, drums, you know, militaristic. It said, on 9-11, we stood together. We stood as united as one. And if you need a car service, that's seven 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 five five. you know, whatever it was. I don't know what the, which, which one it was. But, but they actually did that. They went from patriotic morose, you know, lugubrious, funereal, dirge-like, um, horrible music, while it's still fresh, and they went into a car service commercial. I mean, this is, this is, you know, 9-11 is, is and, and I don't blame most people, it's become almost a religion. People just, just, you know, go nuts over it. So here's the best. The best example, I think, for us to show our our support. On 9-11, and this is important to note, what first responders did and policemen did and, and firefighters and EMS and everybody was that they went in to try to find people. They were actually looking for bodies that was recovery. And then at some particular point after that, it was, you know, clean up. But, but nobody knew anything at first. And how these people can run in when everybody is running away to look for people. Remember, at that moment, at that precise moment, when all hell, literally, actually, figuratively, broke loose, people were, believe me, there was no thought of anything, but I've got to do something. Short amount of time later, we see this incredible disease. Now, before I get to the issue here, I want you to understand something. Do do you have any? And you know, sometimes you have to be a doctor. Sometimes you don't. But let's think of the horrors, the this this uh, uh, pyroclastic, uh, pulverized concrete, um, all of the electronics, all of you know, either jet fuel or, or, or fuel or who knows what. Melted, congealed, you know, some of these temperatures underneath were, it was like a foundry, you know, months later, and, which is another story. But at the time, there was nothing but gray, silt, asbestos-like, crap, a witch's brew in the air. Forget whether you had a mask on a respirator. Your skin, ears, eyes. I mean, it could enter your body through any portal you can imagine. When There was one thing I'll never forget. Right after 9-11, being here in New York, I remember one time there was a smell. I was in my elevator, and I'm way up, to, well, not that, but, but certainly uptown from you know, ground zero. And I don't know what this was, a month later or three weeks later, who knows. But there was enough time that had elapsed. And I was in my elevator and I said, boy, I think there's some kind of an electrical fire or something in this, in this uh, 
elevator. Because it had that kind of a, you know when a motor, electric motor kind of burns out, or sometimes like a vacuum cleaner, or a little tiny motor that's a, there's a metallic electrical smell of it burning, or whatever. Well, that's what I smelled. And I thought it was in the elevator. No, it was everywhere. It was from ground zero all the way uptown. So, who knows what this witch's brew was? Who knows? I mean, I don't know. No, I, Believe me. And Chrissy Todd Whitman, don't forget, EPA said, oh, it's all clear. I mean, if that's not negligence per se, I don't know what. Had she said, get the hell out of there. Don't go near it unless you have a hazmat suit on. People were listening to her. They believed her and our government. I mean, if that right there is negligence, if anything else, why that particular claim has not been pursued, or maybe it has, uh, I don't know if the Federal Tort Claims Act would affect this, but my God, when your country gives you the the A-OK, the all-clear, okay, as promised. My thesis, as I told you, was, okay, I as let's assume that there's no connection, but who cares? Here's why. To begin with, when the government has pissed money away, a couple of things did not happen. One, there was no response or any reaction on the part of most people. People's, because, I, I, at first, I don't think they knew about it. Number two, they don't read about it. Number three, the media don't really report it. And number four, combinations thereof. Let me give you an example. 2007, this is from The Guardian, UK. Now listen to this. 2007. Now keep in mind, we're talking Zadroga was about, let's say, $5 billion or eight years. Right? Ooh, big money. Let, let, listen to what money in 2007, what we did then. Quote, the U.S. flew nearly 12 billion dollars in shrink-wrapped $100 bills into Iraq, then distributed the cash with no proper control over who was receiving it and how it was being spent. The staggering scale of the biggest transfer of cash in the history of the Federal Reserve has been graphically laid bare by a U.S. Congressional Committee. In the year after the invasion of Iraq in 2003, Nearly 281 million notes. This is $100 bills. 281 million notes weighing 363 tons were sent from New York to Baghdad for, for uh, disbursement to Iraq ministries and U.S. contractors. Using C-130 planes, the delivery took place once or twice a month with the biggest of two billion four hundred and one thousand six hundred thousand I'm sorry, two million four two pardon me, excuse me. How about two point four billion dollars on June twenty second, two thousand four, six days after the handover? Stop right there. Let that sink in. Nobody even is asking question number one about that. Think about that. Now, just stop right there. What would these people do with $12 billion all at once on pallets in $100 shrink-wrapped bills? Think about that. Nobody said a word, but all of a sudden, we're now commissioning Doctors, and I don't really blame this guy, per se, but we're, we're asking people to find and to establish causality when $12 billion just vanished. We never got it back. We never accounted for it. That's $12 billion flown over 300 tons of cash, and we don't know where it is. Not a peep. No questions asked. Nobody cares, but all of a sudden... This is a big deal. Now you tell me how that makes sense. So my thesis is very simple. Since we don't care about 12 billion, I don't care about almost five over eight years. What do you say? Okay? But it gets better. Now before we go on, I love this term conspiracy theory or conspir conspiracy theorist or what is that? Some kind of a conspiracy theory? And what conspiracy theory has been has become 
or what it's been relegated to, is basically, oh, what's the word? Something that is unbelievable, or something you don't want to hear, or something that involves something nefarious, or something that's not in the newspaper. I mean, it covers just a spectrum of things. If you say, you know, there's something fishy about this story. Ah, you're a conspiracy theorist. No, no, because a conspiracy in legal terms means a confederation, an agreement between two guilty people, at least, to do something. Conspiracy means to conspire with, to, to agree with, to work in unison with somebody or people or groups or countries or whatever for something that's nefarious. In addition, conspiracy, if that's where you want to go, doesn't necessarily mean it's a conspiracy here, but foreign governments can be involved in a conspiracy. Or foreign governments can be in a conspiracy with a lone rogue um, American or Americans with a rogue country. I mean, there's, there's so many permutations of what conspiracy means, but yet there's this reaction to dismiss it. And it's something that we've got to lose. I don't understand it because we're missing the ability and the, the duty, I think, to analyze things carefully because we are so busy, too, so, so hell-bent on dismissing it as, ah, oh, that's a conspiracy. JFK, come on. The House Assassination the Select Committee said it's a conspiracy. First thing they said. I mean, it's, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean trivial. The word, through everyday parlance, through our, our, our own lexicon now, our own urban dictionary, if you will, has reduced it to frivolous, a far-fetched, insane, imaginary, you know, tinfoil hat, Kool-Aid, please. Do not do that. Be very careful because what's happening is before, if, let me just re rephrase that, if this continues, if this ability for governments or politicians or commentators to dismiss any kind of inquiry, to shut you up and shut you down by accusing you of being conspiratorial when you say, oh, no, 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 and you become so frightened of that label that you cease all inquiry or you look the other way, then they've won. You don't want the word conspiracy theory to be that 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 kryptonite or that, that firewall or whatever metaphor you want to use that stops um, discussion or investigation that, that results in the cessation of investigation and probing. Please don't do that. But let's talk about something that's interesting, shall we? On September the 10th, 2001, September the 10th, now, cue the theremin, <laughs> shades of Robert Klein, but on September the 10th, Donald Rumsfeld announced that the Pentagon had lost roughly 2.3 trillion, with a T, okay, 2.3 trillion dollars at the Pentagon. 2.3 trillion dollars. Now, these numbers get thrown around so much. Nobody was talking about cause and effect. Nobody was asking, first of all, why the Pentagon even needed 2.3 trillion dollars. First responders are, they have to suggest and show why they needed, and they have to show a connection, I love this, between cancer or between what they're doing, and um, cancer. I mean, they, they've got to show this causal connection, this causality. $2.3 trillion, we didn't even know what the hell they did. Where, where did it go? Trillion. T. 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 <laughs> have, I, have I said this? Mr. T. Trillion. Let me give you one. A million. Forget, a million is such chump change. You know how many years a million is? It's like 2,740 or whatever, years. 2,700 years is a million days. 2,700 years is a million days. It's just trillion. This is just... And nobody ever inquired about this again. So my point is, I don't care. I, this, this may be the most illogical thing I've ever said. Well, I doubt it. The day's young. But I don't care about $5 billion dollars. For all these first responders over five years. When you got two point three trillion dollars, twelve billion on a on a pallet, what, what are you talking about? The money that we've spent elsewhere and you're nickeling is that a word? Nickel and diming against me on this 
it gets better. Now the next category is banker bailout. A banker bailout could be the um, the you know tarp, which is kind of different, or foreign banker, you know, basically loans at zero percent interest. I mean, it, it's it's a variety of a lot of stuff. I don't even know where to start with that. You've got tarp, you've got off the books Fed federal, you know, Fed Reserve. Uh, monies, I guess that they just print three point three trillion in zero loans, foreign bank bailouts. God only knows, but that's in the trillions of dollars, and nobody ever follows up on any of that stuff. And when you ask people in the United States what's the Federal Reserve, they look at you like what? The what? Federal Reserve. Um, in fact, do me a favor. This is my favorite trick. Do you know somebody who's a real pain in the ass? A guy who knows everything? Anybody who calls themselves a news junkie? You know one of these people? Do this. Just like I'm telling you. Do this. Say, you know, Marty, you're a pretty shit guy. You know, Marty, uh, if anybody would know this, Marty, you would. Because I know you read the paper, Marty. I know you're a smart guy. You know, Marty, if anybody would know this, it would be you, my friend, because you are a sharp guy. Build him up, or her. Build him up. Have them start to bat their eyes. Well, I, you know, I do like to keep my... No, 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 Marty. You're a smart guy. You would know this, Marty. And then you wait. You see, Marty, what exactly is the Federal Reserve? And just wait. Just wait. And you'll hear, well, it's... Uh, the uh well it they print well um, they uh they set interest rates yeah that's it really that's interesting marty see i knew you know it uh marty is it a is that a federal organization is they are they part of the federal government the federal reserve this is what's really great and if you say yes you're wrong because it's not it's as federal as federal express the line is so corny now Federal, the Federal Reserve is as federal as Federal Express. It's a, it's a central bank. And if ever there was something, you talk about founding fathers and Thomas Jefferson, if anything, that, 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 would, that would, I mean, they would kill you in the street. If, if, if anything, you mentioned a central bank to these guys, and that is their, that's their Susquehanna hat company. The what? Central bank? Slowly I turn. It's by, this is t Benjamin Franklin wrote extensively that if there was one thing that was responsible for the revolution, for really the formation of this country, it wasn't the Tea Party, the Boston Tea Party. It wasn't the thing with the Indians. And stuff. Yeah, it was nice. It was this, the notion of a central bank. Banks, money, that is what con that's what moves the world. Now, that's for a different story. So going back to what I said, we have spent and lost billions and billions and trillions of dollars off the book stuff. We don't even know where it is. And let me go back. And we're going to nickel and dime first responders over about $5 billion over eight years? No. Give them the money. Now, to add another little wrinkle in this mess to show you also the enormity and there there is um there are numbers that are so brobdingnagian so colossal so huge so immense that they really defy any kind of explanation whatsoever i mean they're they're numbers that exceed anything you you could ever even imagine <laughs> because there's, you don't even see them. You know, there was a time in this country where you saw it. You're like, here's a hundred dollars, here's the gold coin, and ching ching ching. And the next thing you know, we started to write checks and bank notes and things like that. We never really, you never saw this stuff. Like, what does a million dollars look like? Drug people always showed you the cash. That was good. 
gold, which will one day be the only acceptable legal tender, will be seen. So when we talk about billions and trillions and quadrillions, they, they don't really mean anything. But here's one for you. There is right now, and G20 have ta has talked about this, but there right now is about a one, maybe, hard to say, there might be about, and this was out of 2009, 2009, there was a 1.5 quadrillion dollar derivatives, I guess you would call it a bubble, 1.5 billion, excuse me, billions, jumped in, quadrillion, 1,500 trillion dollar, okay, you got that, 51,000, 1.5 thousand trillion <laughs> derivatives bubble. This is what, remember, J.P. Morgan Chase, Bank of America, Citibank, Wells Fargo, Bank of New York Mellon, Deutsche Bank, uh, Barclays, uh, zombie banks, all of this, 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 this weird off the books, quantum mechanics, weird parallel universe, antimatter, anti gravity. I don't know what it was. Money and 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 debt that w w we just never even not only didn't know about, didn't care about. So, in conclusion, well, as far as this argument goes, don't you love that? The sound of the city. That's this new, this new siren they have. I don't like this. It's kind of a, it's a low rumble. Anyway. We're supposed to tell, to sit here and, 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 and look at first responders. And you see them here in New York all the time. We have them on PIX11 all the time. They're, they're, they're wonderful people. And sit there and say, well, you know, that is, uh, you know, almost $5 billion over eight years. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's a joke. It's, it's, it's a joke. It's like if I ask you, listen, all I want is whatever coins you have in your pocket or can I just look uh, between, in your sofa cushions Whatever's in there, that's all I want. No, no, sorry. Well, because you really haven't earned it. No, sometimes the numbers are so de minimis. In view of others, other numbers, you just say, yeah, go ahead. Now, the next thing is, look, you, you don't know me, obviously. and But let me tell you, and just, I, I, I hope you believe this, because, well, it's true. I have no affiliation with any political party. I have no belief system in any, or with any group, any um, way of thinking, liberal or conservative or libertarian or anything. I am a registered independent. I don't, I, I really don't have any belief system that is regular, that is constant, that is predictable, that is, you know, again, my word a priori, which is based ahead of time. On any, no, I don't. I have a system. My, my belief system is I'm a political atheist. And whoever is in power, I tend not to care for them because I swear to you, I don't think it's possible for anybody in politics to ever either serve me ably, I mean, yes, every now and then they do something, but for the most part they don't. So whoever's in power, in fact, in fact, I could go a whole year by reading the newspaper, and if you didn't tell me who's in charge, I wouldn't care. I wouldn't care whether it's a Democrat, a Republican, whether it's Obama or, or Bush. And by the way, Obama is the biggest, and I want you to understand this, I, I don't mean any harm by this. But he, in essence, almost like others, is one of the biggest frauds ever. This guy, and he's, he's not so much is he a fraud, but we're stupid for buying into something that he never really said. When he was running for office, he kept saying, change, change you can hope for, hope for change, change. 
I hope I don't change. Change. Ch -ch -ch change it. Hope. Oh, Jesus Christ, I love this guy. He's offering me hope. And at the time, I was working with the Air America folks, and I said, what is, he t what is this hope business? What are you talking about? What are you, ye of little faith, you scalawag, you, 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 um, you uh, apostate? How dare you turn in your progressive label, your calling card, your membership card. I'm not a progressive. I don't even know what the hell that means. Oh, and sure enough, sure enough, he hasn't changed anything. Think about this. What has this current president done? Or I should say, what promise has he kept? Don't give me Obamacare, because I'll be damned if I understand what that is. And, don't get me started, because there may, there may be some constitutional issues as to the Commerce Clause and all this, but that's for another issue. So he comes along here. Now, George W. Bush, and I thought George W. Bush and Cheney, actually President Cheney and, and Bush 43, I thought these guys are, th this is the worst administration I have ever seen. I mean, seriously. I thought, you've got to be kidding me. I mean, do you know in retrospect, I admire, and I, and I didn't see it then. They told you specifically what they were doing. They said, oh yeah. Oh yeah, I don't need no stinking, uh, you know, passage of anything. I'm going in. I don't care what you think. I'm the decider. That's it. Cheney basically announced he was torturing folks just because he didn't have to. He could have just said, torture? What are you talking about? We're not torturing anybody. He kept his mouth shut. Oh, no. He wanted you to know it. You know what else they did? You know, you know what else Bush did? I can't and believe me. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I, but, I, but I didn't realize it. I thought, well, this is the way you did it. And even then I was dissatisfied compared to now. it's Compared to now, I was giddy then. I was so happy. Bush, at least, when he would you know try either Iraq or Afghanistan, at least he would try to pretend like he cared what people thought. First, he would send his best people out on Sundays to go to various shows, and then he would try it in Congress, and he'd go to the, you know, the UN, and he'd try to get a coalition to somebody. Now, Obama, he doesn't do anything. He just... NATO tells us what to do, and we're firing missiles into Libya based upon an order from NATO. Now, this is another this is another issue I don't want to you know veer from it. So, what I'm telling you is, I don't care who's president, and right now, the country, in in terms of the way it looks at its leaders, with this deficit, excuse me, this uh, uh, debt ceiling nonsense. For Christ's sakes, who is the constituency? who is calling for this terrible treatment of 9-11 first responders. Who? Whose idea is it to say, oh, we'll show them. Who's yelling, not a dime, not a dime. Who? Who is, you know, let's face it, politicians are whores, with all due respect to whores. They're trollops and slatterns. They're Ninth Avenue crack whores. They'll do anything for political fame, they pass every kind of law. This is Megan's law, and Eddie's law, and Amber's law, and this law, and that law. They do everything. Who is who is not just saying, you know what? For the first responders, who's going to complain? Remember, stop. I just gave you numbers. 1.5 quadrillion derivative uh, bubbles. <laughs> 1.5 quadrillion. Trillions, 3.34, 2.3 with the Pentagon, three easy in in foreign bank uh, bailouts, nine billion. That's a chump chase. Nine billion. No, no, no. Twelve. I keep saying nine. Twelve billion dollars in hundred dollar bills, and this is five roughly five billion over eight years. Who is arguing for this? Who the president was like, the nah, hell with it. Pass it. You think somebody would say Boehner and uh, Harry Reid? Would say, you know what? We're going to pass emergency legislation. All in favor? I sign it. Nobody, nobody is going to say no, no, no. This country abandons its warriors, its centurions, its military. We turn our back. I mean, closing Walter Reed. Okay, maybe it, maybe it's for you know, maybe they're more efficient. I doubt it. The government being more efficient, I don't think so. What is it? That motivates them. What what is it? 
in their psyche. Don't you think that people would say, hey, what? Hey, Boehner. Yeah, Harry. Harry Reid calls Boehner. Listen, you know, we're really at the bottom of the barrel here. I mean, our, I mean, man, and, uh, in fact, I'll get, get Obama here. Get him on the speakerphone. Obama, yeah, listen. Here's something we can all agree with. What do you think? Who, you got my point? Who's arguing against this? Who? <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand it. Now, we must also talk about something else. Let's assume, you know, because you always have to learn, you know, cry wolf, and we always understand these basic ideas that you have to be careful about what you do because you'll set a precedent. People will perhaps learn from what you're doing and later on decide to pay you back for it. Let's assume there's another disaster in the future. God forbid. Let's assume there's another 9-11 or something like it, okay? Who, in their right mind, is going to run to the help, or to, 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 uh, to help anyone? Who is going to be the first responder of the future? Who, in their right mind, would say, Oh, no, no, no. I'm not sorry about that, Chief. Come on, we need your help. Oh, no, no. I'm not going to do that. Why? Well, I saw how you treated those first responders. Uh-uh. We're going to sign some forms here before we get into it. Sign forms? That's right. We're going to sign some forms. What do you think about that? We're going to sign forms because I don't trust you. I don't trust anything you say. I don't trust you. I don't trust uh, anybody. And by the way, while we're at it, and I mean this with all due respect, if your son or daughter said, Mom, Dad, I'd like to join the Marines. Or... You know, the Rangers, I want to go into combat. I want to go into the Helmand province. Or I want to fight Afghanistan, or fight the Al-Qaeda, which is about which is numbered about 100, according to Bob Gates. Oh yeah, remember that? There's 100 Al-Qaeda. Not 100,000, 100 in Afghanistan. Don't forget that there's cobalt and gold and natural gas and all that other stuff there. But, would you, would you, knowing what you know, the way we treat our veterans... Would you say to your son, hey, that's great. Serve your country. You'd say, hell no. You're going to go over there and you're going to come back and God forbid your... Because, you know, we always hear about these cases where, you know, somebody goes and he gets, you know, the best, you know, a prosthetic hand there is like this very brave man, who young man who, who received the Medal of Honor, you know, he's got this bionic hand and state of the art. And that's great. Everybody should get that. But, oh God, PTSD... I mean, forget it. Broken families, alcoholism, drug abuse. Oh, no, the number of homeless veterans. What, are you kidding me? They go over there. We ravage them. And we thought that we, we thought the treatment in Vietnam couldn't get any worse. And then they come back here and, sorry, see ya. Not interested. But yet, and I repeat, and this is my refrain, $12 billion in shrink wrap $100 bills on pallets sent by a C-130 multiple times. $2.3 trillion unaccounted for in the Pentagon. Trillions, I don't even know, in, in, in foreign bank, forget TARP, because theoretically we can get that back, but foreign bank bailouts. And $1.5 quadrillion in derivative bubbles. I, I don't even know where that is. Glass Steagall's gone. Uh, Bear, I mean, uh, Goldman Sachs is writing stuff. I, 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 I did. That's the part I don't understand. Now, what I just said to you was probably a was probably a very very um, silly argument, but if you think about it, it makes implicit sense. See, that's the thing. My argument is so good. I mean, I'm not bragging, but others have thought the same thing. It's not just me that you can't escape it. Now, I want to also tell you the final argument. And this is this is probably the most unbelievable, but yet it's the most human. You know, I am irreligious for, I mean, I'm a retired Catholic. I really don't believe in anything that, that you would recognize as anything. And I nonetheless love the idea of Jesus, and I'm only familiar, and with all due respect to Judaism or Islam or all this, I don't, I, I'm not, but I was raised, you know, I understand that. And the idea of do unto others, 
to have a heart to pay back people, not income, but reimbursement for health. A man who is struggling, a man who has the most horrible brain cancer, and let's assume there's no causal connection. Let's assume it was purely happenstance, coincidental. Nobody ever asked any means testing or causality test for the $12 billion in cash. And I'm sorry, I'm not budging. If we don't care about that, I don't care about this. But imagine that we say, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do something. We're going to stop killing. We're going to stop destroying property, blowing people up, killing innocent people, drone attacks. You know, one drone attack, one illegal drone attack on a sovereign country, okay, would probably handle, I mean, God knows how much it costs. When you figure out the cost of one drone, the flight, the bit, the, probably might take care of the whole bill. I mean, I don't think it's $5 billion, but the point is, we do this every day. I, we don't even know about it. You don't hear, believe me, the, the media report nothing. And this crap on TV about, we bring you the news. No, you don't. And let me tell you something before I forget. If you don't understand the con of this, my friend, I don't know what I'm going to have to do to, to help you. Do you realize, let's take, let's, let's take GE. GE is a defense contractor. GE, Jeff Immelt, who was their CEO of GE, and GE is what, 49% owner of NBC and, uh, and MSNBC, I think Comcast, they have their partnership. But GE is, I mean, come on, please. And Immelt is the CEO of GE, and he's on a, uh, Obama's advisory committee, and plus he's got to outsource. You know that in 2000, was it 10, on $5 billion profit, they paid zero taxes? <laughs> and you think, you think that NBC and MSNBC were that lean forward crap? What the hell does that mean, lean forward? It's like, more like bend over. We're going to, you know, anyway. You think you're going to get any of this? Do you have any idea of what you don't know? I mean, seriously, do you? Have, if, if you knew what you didn't know, you would drop to your knees and cry like a baby. But let me go back to what I said. Can you imagine if we as human beings, I mean, just as a species, said, you know what, this guy with a catastrophic brain tumor, we're going to give him the money. Hey, Sloan Kettering, yeah, send us the bill. I'll take care of it. And if we can, I'll just tell Ben Bernanke, Ben, print some money. You're good at that. Print something. Pretend it's a foreign bank. You're good at that. Print it. Take care of it. You're off the hook. No problem. Tax-free. Tax-free. The guy's going to die. We're not giving income. You know that whole thing about income versus reimbursement? You know, like, for example, uh, personal injury awards are not taxable because it's not income. You're actually being made whole again. Yeah, well, this is not income. And when people... And I'm really going to be corny now, but bear with me. Drinking coffee, pardon me. Imagine somebody looking down from, from another planet, and they look at them, look at these humans, especially this one group here. These guys are really messed up, yeah. Well, these people are starving. These people are, I mean, this is horrific conditions over here. These people are killing these people. I mean, we've been through genocide, we've been through whatever, still, still going through that. And we have this thing about if we help people, our own, it's socialism. Listen, I understand there's a lot of uh, good reasons behind basically handing over the checkbook to people. Self-sufficiency, believe me, I understand this. But what does it say about this? Well, we see these poor guys on Pix11, and by the way, Pix11 has done a tremendous job trying to highlight this, but what, what do you see when these, these guys are begging they shouldn't have to ask for this. And, and and when somebody says, hey, listen, I was there. Look at me. See this picture of me? Yeah. See all the dust and debris and and uh, pulverized pyroclastic dust and asbestos? and Yeah, that, that's me. You see that? This was all this computer and electronics and wires and hard drives and God knows what melted down, mixed together in this organic witch's brew. That's me. And you know what's the damnedest thing that happened? And I can't prove this. But lo and behold, I've got brain cancer. Now let's see. I didn't have brain cancer before, but I've got it now. Huh. Maybe, I'm no doctor here, but maybe 
that 9-11 ground zero, where I was there day after day, sometimes weeks, maybe that has something to do with it. I, I cannot believe why we're even debating this. Seriously. I think that there is no help for us. I think that we have become almost sociopaths, psychopaths. We share a psychopathy that is so amazing. You know, the psychopath, uh, in fact, has become very um, kind of in the news, as it were. There's a great book I wrote, I read, and I recommend it called The Psychopath uh, Test by John Ronson. And the psychopath it's kind of interesting. Psychopath is not, and sociopath, basically the same thing, but psychopath is not neurotic, they're not crazy, but a psychopath is somebody who does not appreciate consequence. And this is a very interesting, this is so interesting, what a psychopath is. And I see us kind of collectively sharing a lot of this, this psychopathy, these, these traits. And a psychopath, one of the best description I heard is, a psychopath does not have a connection between head, you know, and, and heart, or gut, and it's the inability to appreciate consequence. Let me explain. If I were to tell you, listen, um, why don't you fool around on your wire? Why don't you, uh, you know that money that you have access to in your job, you know the petty cash, why don't you take a, take a couple of grand? They're not going to miss it. Or uh, why don't you um, do whatever? The first thing that most people say is, wow. Immediately they say, before they even address whether it's morally right or wrong, they say, well, I could get caught. No, I'm caught. That'll be a tough thing because I would you know, maybe lose my wife or lose my job or get arrested or be humiliated. And, ooh, I don't like that. And that ooh, is, the, is the gut and the heart because you're appreciating consequence. You're looking to the future. You're saying, aha, if I do A, then B occurs. That's what it is. That's what we do. That's kind of our morality. It's not so much that, oh, no. Jesus would not like that. I mean, that may be part of it. Most of us, though, and I'll be honest, I'm kind of the same way, most of us kind of sort of just react in that weird kind of... Well, we, we, we think about the immediate, you know, what happens if we get caught thing. And you can say, for whatever it's worth, you could say that this is, you know, morality or not. But the psychopath does not have that. The psychopath doesn't have that, ooh, he can't appreciate consequence. Let me take you two studies before I get too much off of this, but I love this, because this is what a psychopath is. Two studies that are really amazing. They did this one group where they took um, a control group, non-psychopaths, and they put this little uh, measuring device, I don't know where, um, head or something, where they could, they could react or watch their brain uh, respond to emotion. Whatever the, whatever the particular metric was. What they did was they said, at the count of ten, we're going to give you an electric shock. Not a strong one, but enough. The count of ten. One. Two. Three. And the subjects started to feel this kind of a... Mm, this um, kind of felt... You know, tension, apprehension, uh, apprehension, uh, uh, nervousness. Seven, eight. You know, and they felt it, and then and and, and you could see the the concomitant results. Psychopaths, nothing happened. Nothing. I mean, you told them down to ten, but that heart and gut didn't connect. Head and gut, I should say. There was no. No appreciation for consequence. No appreciation for the future. No, no fear. Nothing. The next one I thought was interesting. They took a group of people and they had them watch pictures of horrible, horrible events. Close contact uh, shots of um, suicide. Close. You know, close. Um, brutal. Uh, awful. Horrific pictures of people shot, bleeding, whatever it was. And and they would show them one after another, slide after slide, picture after picture. And, and the control group, the non-psychopath, you know, look at this, and, oh my God, it was terrible. And all of a sudden, they would make a noise, like, you know, like a buzzer or something, and these people would jump out of their seats. 
Now, psychopath group, same thing. They would show a series of these horrible pictures. And then they would make the noise, and, er, the noise, and nothing. They wouldn't budge. They wouldn't react. And the reason why is, think about this. When you're in a horror movie, and you're seeing things that are, where you, you see, again, the ability to, to appreciate consequence, to, 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 to be pressured, to, to augur the future, to see, to see a result coming, something's about to happen, something's coming your way, something awful, something terrible. When you're on the edge of your seat and something happens and there's a loud noise, you jump whenever you hear a noise. But when you're deeply involved in a thought process, for example, let's say you're doing a crossword puzzle and something and the the clock in your kitchen or something falls off or something falls off the wall and crashes. Sometimes you don't even you don't even budge because you're involved in this cerebral work. That's what it was for the psychopath. They looked at stuff, and it was to them like they were, there was no reaction. So consequently, when there was a loud noise, they weren't on the edge of their seats because these events didn't do anything to them. It's not that they had no conscience. They had no ability to appreciate consequence. That's where we are today. That's where our politics is. That's where everything is. There's this cold, detached, eh. And it, it, it is just incredible. We are... Using euphemisms, the president and our, our government refer to war as kinetic movement or kinetic. They use the word kinetic. Kinetic military action. They actually use, in fact, Obama's people regarding Libya. It wasn't a war. It was a kinetic military action. It, it's, and the more you do that, the more you separate the reality, the, way, the more you euphemize, if you will, the more you wax euphemistic, or the way you sanitize and, and dilute and take away any of the sting or the horror of a particular event, you, you habituate and you generalize people to, to the particular behavior. What, what I'm seeing and what you've seen with this 9-11 first responder business is an absolute collective psychopathic reaction on the part of the government to something that screams for human reaction, human tenderness, human human emotion. We are, the government, our government has become a series of psychopaths. So in peroration, I simply say this to the president, members of Congress, take out that checkbook and just close your eyes and pretend it's a foreign bank. Pretend pretend that you're sending $12 billion in shrink-wrapped $100 bills to Iraq that you're never going to see again, unaccounted for. Pretend it's merely $2.3 trillion in um, cash, unaccounted for by the Pentagon. Imagine it is a $1.5 quadrillion dollar derivative bubble uh, cloud, whatever this thing is, just imagine, change the way you think. And maybe then we'll show some compassion. Again, we're talking about $5 billion over what is it, eight years or whatever. I mean, it, 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 it just, it, just uh, it, it astounds me. It absolutely astounds me. And this is not, this is not Democrat or Republican. This is not liberal or conservative. You know, what would Jesus do? Seriously, I, I go back to that. These people who are the loudest the ones who claim that this is a Christian country. Now, what would Jesus do? So, spread this. Do me a favor. Send this uh, MP3 to others. Spread the word. Think, if you will. Demand this. And by the way, this is the new. This is the way talk, spoken word, is going to be. It's not going to be. Uh, well, it's going to be studio and all that stuff. But it's going to be just this transformation of ideas, memes. From person to person to person, almost in a chromosomal genetic transference, if you will. Transitive property of thought. That's what this is. Drop me a line at Lionel at LionelMedia.com if you have any questions. Follow me on Twitter at Lionel Media. Follow me on Facebook at Lionel's Fan Page. 
Watch me every night, seven nights a week, and Monday mornings on Pix11 News. That's Pix11.com slash, slash, by the way, is Solidus or Virgule, depending upon where you're from. Pix11.com slash Lionel. And do whatever you want, whatever you can. Send somebody a note, if anybody still does that. And the bottom line is this, and I think I made it very, very clear. Stop thinking if we can piss trillions of dollars away on stuff that we're not even sure why we did it, we can uh, compassionately devote and direct just a couple of billion. Oh, that's making a trillion. What the heck? Again, pretend it's a foreign bank. Then everybody's happy. But put it here in this country, kind of like TARP did, kind of like, you know, stimulus packages, but put it here not to reward, not to provide income, but to compensate for reimbursement for catastrophic health problems that were caused by their bravery, their willingness to help us. They helped us. Now it's time for us to help them. They throw in, uh, you know, veterans as well and, and others. So thank you so much for being a part of this. Gee, it's only been an hour and six minutes. Where has the time gone? This is Lionel with you, providing the following valedictory as I have for the past um, 23 years. The monkey's dead. The show's over. Sue you.